weddings. In those moments, I can only hope and pray that the new couple will not go the same painful route we did. You see, we too once made our vows when we were young and bright-eyed, with the purest of motives, the grandest of intentions, and the loftiest of hope. But just as the Titanic sank on her maiden voyage, so did ours on our Our fighting began on day one because we were sadly ignorant of God's design for marriage. I was a young Christian and Ruchi was a product of Evangeligao, meaning I shared the gospel, she accepted, and we thought that was all that was needed for marriage. We were married in 1992 in the U.S. and settled in my parents' house in Cavite because I considered renting a waste of money. However, this was clearly not aligned with the biblical counsel that man shall leave his father and mother in order for the two to become one. It was also bad enough that I uprooted someone raised in the U.S. and settled her in a place far removed from family and friends. But what made it worse was that my business was in Makati and a normal day meant me coming home past 10 p.m. In short, I was a typical husband who thought that my obligation was simply to provide materially. I was emotionally detached and callous to the deep emotional need of a wife who was profoundly scarred by her dysfunctional past. My husband was a big disappointment. He was not the solution I thought he would be. After all, I got married to escape the unhappy family life I had in the U.S., and it was my expectation that marriage would make my life complete. Admittedly, I also didn't know how to be a wife. In my mind, I was a princess and thought my husband was there to make me happy and complete. But JP also did not know how to be a husband. He was so busy that at times when I wanted to speak to him, he would tell me, don't talk to me, I'm working. I felt very lonely and longed for love and purpose. Then heaping mistake after these mistakes, I also went against my parents' advice and allowed my wife to go to medical school if only to keep her busy and for her to meet new friends. And meet them she did. In school, I was overjoyed at the new friends. I met, uh, I was overjoyed at the new friends I met and the new experiences that came my way. So because of this newfound freedom, after my first year of medical school, I left my husband. I left because I felt neglected by him. I felt unloved, I felt unimportant. I just wasn't his priority. I was lost, very angry, and looked for love and importance. All that I wanted and needed, I didn't find in JP. Devastated and confused, I did what many naturally do. I went forum shopping for advice. Many well-meaning people, Christians at that, told me that it was okay to divorce since we were married abroad. She was the one who left. Everyone deserves a second chance at happiness and other things that I wanted to hear. But God's providence surrounded me with those who told me what I needed to hear. Pastor Nathan Lee told me that I was at a life moment, so my decision better be aligned with God's will. Pastor Danny Perez reminded me that however else I decided, I should make sure that I had a clear conscience with God. And Pastor Peter challenged me with this perspective. He said, Okay, suppose you divorce your wife and remarry, so you're happy for 5, 10, 20 years. Then what? He added, JP, I love you, and whatever you decide, you will not have a problem with me, but you will have a problem with God. All these words of godly wisdom given about 20 years ago, I still remember as though spoken just yesterday. So instead of simply doing what seemed right in my eyes, I chose to get deeper into God's Word and began growing in my personal relationship with Him. While Pastor Peter took time to disciple me, his wife, Diana, was working on Ruchi, often inviting her to their home so she could see how God designed families to interact with each other. And she also encouraged me to keep the doors of reconciliation open. I remember saying, okay, but only this much. That I did by picking Ruchi up from her dorm near UST 
and having her spend the weekends with me in my condo in my Makati. But even those times were hellish. She would always fight with me. I'd fight with JP because I blamed him for our failed marriage. I hated my husband so much that I didn't want to look at him or have him brush up against me. But admittedly, the one thing I liked about him was that he loved God. There was something so different about him, and I wondered how come he was okay and happy while I was so miserable. I was enjoying a single life, but I was a wreck. JP, on the other hand, had joy and peace, and I wanted what he had. I remember one time asking him why he allowed me to treat him badly and take advantage of his hospitality. He told me that he could not stand the thought of me spending eternity in hell, so he was standing in the gap so I wouldn't fall through the cracks. Fast forward to December 31, 1999. We were having lunch at Glorieta, and in tears, Ruchi asked for forgiveness. I remember the prompting. This is an opportunity to destroy someone or to build someone up. I was also reminded, how can you refuse forgiveness when you yourself have been so greatly forgiven? With that, I reached across the table, held her hand, and we were reconciled. So how is it possible, praise God. So how is it possible to be forgiven this way? I simply cannot express the unmerited joy such forgiveness brings. My sin was so great that God's love and grace through my husband be has become so overwhelmingly precious. So with such forgiveness, how can I refuse to forgive my, other, uh, my husband and others as well? In 1 Peter 2 verse 9, the Apostle Peter reminds us that his followers are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, so that we may declare the praises of Him who called us out of darkness and into His wonderful light. To declare His praise today as we close this month is significant because last April 4, Ruchi and I just celebrated our 26th year anniversary. And what we testify to you is what God can do with broken lives, broken dreams, broken hearts, and broken relationships. Today, I serve as a pastor in CCF, and Ruchi is my ministry partner. Together, we are engaged in God's work of reconciling people back to Him and to each other. Our burden is to share God's Word and to mentor others that they might not suffer the consequences of disobedience as we did. And while we all know that God's Word is a light to our path, May each of us also learn to walk in faith and obedience to those words in the short time that He gives each of us to prepare for eternity. God, our Heavenly Father, deserves all the glory. Let His family give Him praise. Praise God.